so as some of you know by now, I've been away for a few days, I scheduled a few videos, but I wasn't able to get to one of these news roundup videos. And because I've been away, today's video, we've got so many stories to get into. And all of them, I would say pretty much 80% of them are huge stories, which I've been dying to talk about. So this video will be timestamped. Yes, it's gonna be long. I've got shit to say. If you wanna skip to various stuff, I can't include every topic in the video title. So do browse the video chapters because we're gonna be touching on things like the Constantine movie movie with Keanu Reeves, but also what's happened to the HBO Max Constantine series. We've got Stargirl, Titans crossover stuff to talk about. I know I've said this in my recent videos, but if it sounds like I'm struggling to talk, it's because I'm kind of sick right now, so I do apologize for my disgusting voice. We've got the new Black Adam promo, which fans have really got to thinking, okay, does this make that Superman rumor true with regards to what Black Adam says in it? And yes, of course, more Ezra Miller news, of which... You know, there, there's some like messiah stuff going on there and I, I don't know how much to talk about this because the, the article gets into a lot of things. And not only that, news of Warner Brothers Discovery. We already know that Warner Brothers had a merger with Discovery, but there could be another, yes, maybe another merger in a few years time. Other than that, we've got some small updates on Batman Cape Crusader, Patty Jenkins, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, a live action Blade Runner series, which, oh my God, I definitely wanna talk about that, and probably a few other bits and pieces that I'm just forgetting to mention on the top of my head. So go ahead and like this video if you are enjoying these news roundups. I know sometimes they're long, but again, just skip to whatever you wanna talk about. It gives me the opportunity to touch on so many other topics on the channel. Uh, if you're wondering about no She-Hulk reviews, again, on top of me being away, being sick, trying to do other videos, plus the episodes not being, uh, I kind of am gonna get back to it when Daredevil comes in. Now, as for Andor, unfortunately, I was also away when those three episodes dropped. So what I'm going to do with the episode 4 review is lightly touch on my review and overall thoughts on the first three episodes as well. I do apologize about that, but we're going to be up and running on the channel as of this new week. Let's start with the Constantine news, or the Constantine, whatever way you want to say it. Yes, you are actually, you know, it's intended to be Constantine. But yes, Keanu Reeves. Now, I remember, I think I made a video about this. I don't know if it's like a year and a half ago to two years ago, but for the longest time, even the guy who played Lucifer way back in the Constantine movie back in the day was teasing some kind of future for Constantine with Keanu Reeves. And finally, Finally, we have got word on that Keanu Reeves is coming back for a sequel to the Constantine movie. So this is coming from Deadline. The headline is as follows. Warner Brothers sets Constantine sequel, Keanu Reeves and Francis Lawrence to reunite Akiva Goldsman's scripting and producing with bad robots J.J. Abrams and Hannah Mengele. So exclusive, here is a resurrection of a DC character worth getting excited over. Warner Brothers will develop another installment of the 2005 supernatural thriller, Constantine. And the studio is reteaming star Keanu Reeves and director Francis Lawrence, who made his helming debut on the original. Now, Akiva Goldsman will write the screenplay and produce the project through his Weed Road Pictures, alongside Bad Robots, J.J. Abrams, and Hannah Mengele. This deal was shepherded by Warner Brothers Pictures Group co-chairs Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi. So my thoughts on this initially, before we move on to the HBO Max news, is that it's interesting. I love Keanu Reeves, and Keanu Reeves as Constantine is one of those kind of cool Keanu movies. That's the thing. I don't think it's like mind-blowingly spectacular in like a written sense, but it's still got that, you know, swagger and charisma of the other Keanu movie, especially in his early days. I think I watched this when I was probably way too young to watch this. So this came out in 2005, which makes me, I was born in 94. So like 10, 11 years old at the time. And I remember being kind of like, okay, this is cool, but this is kind of scary, especially when you got to the demon-y parts. So another thing about Keanu Reeves Constantine is it's quite inaccurate to Hellblazer slash Constantine himself. So it's interesting with the news we're about to get into, even though it doesn't spell the end of the world for the HBO Max Constantine, that the two people making these decisions, Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi were like, you know what, we're setting priority for another Constantine movie with Keanu. But the thing is, I am down for this. I'm excited for it. Again, I love Keanu. It's going to be a much aged version of Constantine, you'd have to think, with regards to, like, I, I guess, you know, 
Constantine kept living and now he's gonna look like how he does with Keanu in present day, longer hair maybe. But what do you guys think of this? Are you down for another Constantine movie? For me, I'm like, sure, why not? Even if there are inaccuracies there. But moving on to some other news. As some of you guys know, J.J. Abrams signed a deal. I think it was back in 2019. Many, many millions of dollars. He was given the licenses to the Justice League Dark characters. I believe there was going to be a Justice League Dark series or movie. I think it was a movie in the works. Madame X, HBO Max series. Constantine series. I believe even a Zatanna movie. And they were going to really just kind of bridge out their own universe there. And obviously there was going to be a Superman movie, a black Superman movie. In the recent months, we had reports of like Warner Brothers were kind of frustrated with Abrams because other than his Demimonde or Demimond, however you pronounce it, project that didn't get a green light at HBO Max. He had nothing really to show for his work. Projects have been in development like Constantine and whatnot for a couple of years. There's been scripts written by Guy Bolton, but like nothing major, nothing's happened. So it's like, dude, we gave you all this money. Like, well, what's going on here? Well, we've got a big update on this and it's not the end of the world, but it is certainly interesting. So coming from Deadline as well, J.J. Abrams, Constantine series and Madame X will be shopped elsewhere after HBO Max passes. I was always wondering if this would see the light of day because we've had other HBO Max series like Strange Adventures in development for a long ass time. Kevin Smith on board to do a bizarro Superman story with Jimmy Olsen and everything like that. Superman comes in at the end of the episode. Not happening. Other things that you've heard of. Not happening. And now this with J.J. Abrams that he was basically hired to do with other bits and bobs. Not happening. Well, kind of not happening, at least at HBO Max, especially given the crazy cost-cutting measures David Zaslav is trying to adhere to over at Warner Brothers Discovery. Again, examples of that are shows not happening, Batgirl not happening, all of these streaming things that were like taken off of HBO Max so they don't have to pay residuals out and whatnot just disappeared overnight. They're really trying to cut money, as you know. And now, another example of that, not only was Batman Cape Crusader, but now Constantine and Madame X. But obviously the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie had a bit of an impression on this, so Deadline go on to say that Keanu Reeves returning to the Constantine franchise, as revealed by Deadline earlier this afternoon, has thrown up some dust in the TV business. HBO Max has passed on the J.J. Abrams executive produced television series version of Constantine, which was being written by British writer Guy Bolton and a series based on DC Comics Madame X with Angela Robinson. The fact that Warner Brothers is developing another installment of Constantine on the film side with Reeves attached to return with Francis Lawrence directing and Akiva Goldsman writing didn't help its small screen sibling series chances. However, the series, which was a darker reboot of the DC character, inspired by the character's appearance in the Hellblazer comics that takes place in contemporary London, had been in development for over two years, well before HBO Max even launched and long before David Zaslav took over the studio. They go and say that both projects will be shopped by the studio to other platforms next week. Sources said that both Warner Brothers Television and Bad Robot Productions remain high on them and expect them to find new homes. Which is interesting, that could be just a bit of talk there, but at the same time, if you've been developing it for two years, which I, I, I don't know if I should say that because this is the TV business, you do have shows like Strange Adventures, which are in development for a long time, as we said, and other stuff that just go down the rabbit hole. You won't really see it again. Now, this could find new light out there at other platforms like Netflix and whatnot and other contenders of which we're about to get into with Batman Cape Crusader because there's some shopping updates on that if you will because that also got passed on by HBO Max but I don't know man like there's something telling me are they really gonna have a Keanu Reeves sequel to Constantine and also kind of develop a Constantine TV series there's nothing wrong or saying that you can't do that but I don't know I'm thinking would they repurpose this into a Johanna Constantine or Constantine series from the Sandman because I know a lot of fans have been wanting to see something with Jenna Coleman's Johanna Constantine from Sandman but at the same time this Constantine series from HBO Max which has now been passed on has been prepared and written for a male Constantine you know I think Shopre Dirisu was looking or being eyed to be the main 
role or casting of choice. So I don't think it would just be repurposed into a Johanna one. But considering it hasn't even started production and considering neither has the Keanu Reeves Constantine sequel movie, it could find itself coming out around the same time and people would be like, wait, is this linked to that? Is it not? obviously not? But do you know what I mean? Funnily enough, the TV show would be more accurate in the lore sense over the movie one. But I, I think that's all I want to say about this. I don't know if they're going to carry on and get picked up by another platform, uh, but let me know if you're optimistic about that. Obviously, this includes Madame X. I haven't really got much to say about that because there was really little news on that, even compared to Constantine on HBO Max. But leave me all of your thoughts down in the comments. Batman Cape Crusader, as you know, suffered a similar fate, was being developed for HBO Max, was getting there and whatnot, and then they passed on it just like Constantine, but it was being shopped around. Now we've got a teeny tiny little update here from The Hollywood Reporter, and they say to many, the Cape Crusader suffered an ignoble fate when it was revealed that the animated series wouldn't be streamed on HBO Max, even though it was being made by Warner Brothers' sister arm, Cartoon Network. The series was supposed to bring back, either spiritually or perhaps more directly, Batman stories led by Bruce Timm, who redefined the animation medium in the 1990s with Batman the Animated Series. We previously told you the series was going to be shot to potential buyers, and guess what? That's exactly what happened last week and into this week. Tim and heavy hitters J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves took the show on the road for a series of big pitches to the major streamers. At press time, Netflix, Amazon, and Apple are the big contenders. So that's interesting to note. I mean, it's not necessarily surprising, but they are doing the pitches. Hey, Apple. Hey, Amazon. Hey, Netflix. Do you want this from the makers of Batman the Animated Series, from the makers of the Batman, Matt Reeves, J.J. Abrams, of all these other franchises and whatnot, which people uh, often say, did J.J. destroy them or not? But either way, I think it is in safe hands with regards to it being picked up at one of these places. Batman's a big property, obviously. Another animated series that they're going to be boasting behind these creative visions and, you know, industry professionals. I think Netflix or Amazon or even Apple. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple tried really hard to get it. So more people try and go over to Apple TV. But yeah, it, it looks like it is being viewed for now. So let me know what you think of this. Are you excited for this still? Do you really want to see the Cape Crusader TV series? I personally do. I'm not always diving into the animated medium of content out there, even though I'm really loving the cyberpunk Edge Runner series on Netflix right now. For me, it, I like animation a lot when I'm into it. It takes me a while to get into other things, but Batman, as you know with me, I would be straight in on that. So of course I want to see this. Okay, so the next story is potentially a huge one. It's not necessarily madly surprising right now. It doesn't even necessarily mean it's going to happen. But it's certainly interesting to, to imagine the next three or four years from now if this comes to fruition. And that is that, as we know, Warner Brothers merged with Discovery and we had David Zaslav come in and they're essentially cleaning house, kind of. They want to perfect the imperfections of the old regime. They brought in their new regime. We've seen swift and blunt actions done with that. Some people think they're great decisions. Some people think, no, they're not. Some people are in the middle saying, yeah, no, you, you might improve DC and all these other franchises. Uh, and, you know, we, we're going to have to wait and see. But the thing is now, what if all of this house cleaning and making sure that, you know, you've got people viewing your apartment, so to speak. So you want everything nicely on display. You want all your DC franchises and everything and basically get your shit together. So people come in and make sure, hey, I actually might want to buy that place. And that could be what David Zaslav is doing with Warner Brothers Discovery, DC, which, you know, Obviously, I can't really blame him for in one way because obviously they need to get their house in order. They need to get their shit together and make DC successful as what he's been saying. You know, in movies like The Batman and Joker and, and this, that and the other exemplify what they want to do with the next 10 years of DC. But there could be maybe behind the curtains a little ulterior motive here because they might want to make it look prim and proper for another, another potential merger 
in the future. And what The Hollywood Reporter has to say is quite interesting when you read the article. So I'm going to try and breeze through this. They say Warner Brothers Discovery has bigger problems than its DC search. The film studio's hunt for its own Kevin Feige may be complicated by key questions about what's next for the heavily indebted company and whether another major deal is on the horizon. Given the company's daunting challenges, it has become accepted wisdom at the highest levels of the industry that another deal waits in the wings for Warner Brothers discovery. For reasons related to the company structure of that merger, no negotiations can happen until April 2024, but at that point many industry observers believe that Comcast's Brian Roberts will make a long-awaited move, looking to combine NBC Universal and Warner Brothers Discovery. That deal would face some interesting antitrust issues, but would give his company scale and viable streaming service. Obviously, Peacock sucks, says one exec with knowledge of both companies. There are some good synergies. I'm sure Roberts is licking his chops because the Warner Brothers Discovery stock is so low, and I think that's Sus Love's endgame. Get the place sold. A Warner Brothers Discovery spokesperson responds, we are building Warner Brothers Discovery for the long term. Many top industry executives are so convinced the deal will happen that some are pre-mourning an event that may never happen. People feel like it's Comcast for sure, says the head of one company. It's going to be so depressing to lose another major studio after Disney brought Fox, and Warner's was the Tiffany studio. Of course, an obituary is premature. Maybe Warner's will do a deal with Comcast, maybe not. Meanwhile, Zuslov continues his quest to find a DC superhero, but it seems possible that, eventually, DeLuca and Pam Abdi, now acting heads of the division, will end up running things by default, and that's what we were going over earlier. They secured this Constantine sequel movie with Keanu Reeves, you know, and with everything going on right now, are they really going to find someone to get that job? It might just be DeLuca and Abdi just holding these reins for the future success of Warner Brothers film and television. Right now, things are getting in order, but that's not an unnatural turn of events with this Discovery merger. We all knew, and what we've been witnessing, is something that would have inevitably happened anyway. They've brought in their new regime. They saw that the old regime under Warner Brothers before the merger wasn't exactly working out crazy well, of course. You had, like, the Batman and things brought in, like, Joker, but then... You know, the, the future they didn't really agree with, with, you know, what was going on with Batgirl and Michael Keaton going into the post-Flashpoint soft reboot future of the DCEU. So Zaslav came in, it's like, no, we're doing this, we're doing this, we might be getting Affleck back, maybe Keaton staying confined to the Flash movie, Batgirl saying goodbye, we've also got all of this billions of dollars of debt, so we don't really want to do the Constantine series, we don't want Cape Crusader, we're not doing Batgirl, we're writing that off for the tax write-down, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, we've also cancelled Scooby, this animated movie or whatever, we've done that, we've taken loads of things off HBO Max, but we're gonna definitely do the Batman too. In fact, we've signed a first look deal with Matt Reeves and man, we're gonna give anything to Matt Reeves uh, that he wants so we can continue to keep making good money there. We've got Joker 2, Fleet Adur. So they are, they do know what is gonna be successful, but they are trimming as expected for a successful future. As the spokesperson said, they're here for the long game. But a merger isn't out of this world in terms of like a new merger that is, an additional merger, because they have got other things they need to figure out, lots of debt, lots of things like that. They want to make themselves look prim and proper with a good slate in the next couple of years, so maybe that merger could be more appealing. But we're going to ultimately have to wait and see there. So let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think this will bring any problems for the future? Obviously, companies being absorbed by other companies like what they mentioned, Disney, Fox, and now, you know, Warner Brothers, Discovery, but now maybe NBC Universal. The list just goes on, and ultimately, we're just going to have to watch this space. Okay, so up next is that update on Ezra Miller. I'm sure many of you have heard about this by now, but I wanted to kind of gloss over it a bit. So essentially, if you don't know already, Vanity Fair have, have released this kind of article that, that kind of gives this chronology to the sequence of events way back into that karaoke bar, I believe, ages ago when there was that video clip of Ezra and that girl and, and all the way up until present day. But it's just with additional context. Over the last six weeks, 
We have spoken to more than a dozen people who crossed paths with Miller in recent years, some of whom worked closely or lived with the actor on a 95-acre farm in Vermont. Most sources described Miller's spiral as a conflagration of mental health issues the actor has acknowledged, along with drugs, guns, and outlandish claims that have raged for more than two years. They say that the actor verbally and emotionally abused those around them and referred to themselves alternately as Jesus and the devil. Three people say Miller has also wrapped the superhero they play into their grandiose speechifying. The actor, says one source, was claiming that the Flash is the one who brings the multiverses together just like Jesus. Now that there, like the latter of that, doesn't sound nearly as strange as the stuff this article gets into later on. It, it gets quite weird. I do recommend reading this for yourself to get the full context. I mean, it, it does get into initially how Ezra didn't start freaking out and losing control of themselves in public until after this happened, says a longtime friend. That is apparently Ezra's parents divorced in 2019, and then this series of behavior over the past few years has been going on ever since then. This longtime friend says that the Iceland incident happened, and then it just kept going and going and going and going. While in Iceland, Miller was accompanied by Jasper Young Bear, a 55-year-old North Dakota medicine man the actor had hired as a spiritual advisor. Young Bear seems to have stoked Miller's outsized version of himself. Jasper was telling Ezra that he wasn't a part of the movement. He was the movement. That he was the next messiah and that the Freemasons were sending demons out to kill him. And it just keeps getting weirder. The article then goes on to say eventually that Miller is said to have woven young Takata Iron Eyes into their narrative, claiming that the pair were fated to be together. A rep for Miller maintains that the actor's relationship with the activist has always been platonic. Ezra is Jesus, and Takata's an apocalyptic Native American spider goddess, and a union is supposed to bring about the apocalypse. Apparently, the house in Vermont contains an altar uh, that's home to bullets, weed, sage, and flash figurines, according to the two people who visited this year. A lot of the time, he makes the women put their cell phones on the altar when they come in. And other offerings, says a longtime friend, Ezra freaked out recently, demanding that Susan Sarandon come pay tribute to his altar because she didn't invite Ezra to a dinner party. It's just, I, 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 uh, again, you can't take every single word from these people, these longtime friends and whatnot, as fact. That's one thing I do want to just put out there, like, completely neutrally. Yes, there's been, like, legitimate arrests, this, that, and the other, but I'm just saying you can't believe absolutely everything you read kind of thing. But at the same time, I'm not saying that I don't believe it. We, we, you, you don't really know, and most certainly, it's not a stretch from the imagination, some of these things that you're reading, or you might read in this article if you, if you do go on to read the full context, because of the things that have popped up over the recent years. I don't know, that's all I wanna say about this. It's just, what more can I say? What more can we say? The movie's coming out, Warner Brothers Discovery want it to come out, and by all accounts, apparently it's a really good movie. Despite what you think about all this stuff, I will be more or less repeating myself from previous videos if I go on anymore. Obviously, we can have the discussion down in the comments below with all of these continuous pieces coming out. Do you think there should be any kind of recognition of Ezra Miller in the press tour, interviews and whatnot, let alone carrying on as The Flash, which I don't think is going to happen after this movie does premiere? I don't know what else to say. So the next story, very briefly, because we've spoken about this in a previous video, but there's been some cool updates, is the Titans and Stargirl Plus Doom Patrol crossover that they appear to be doing. Now, here we have some actual confirmation now because originally it was rumored that some kind of, and from what I heard as well through the grapevine, is that a casting sheet was going round. It obviously didn't give any major spoilers, just that certain actors from certain different shows were appearing. Now I think the cat has been out the bag on social media. They've just been like, okay, you can kind of show people that you are filming together. We already knew that Breck Bassinger, who plays Stargirl, was rumored to be filming in Canada, Toronto, I believe, or was it Vancouver, I can't remember, on a certain date. And then lo and behold, she was flying on that certain date. So now we have a photo with her, the director, Eric Dean Seaton, Ryan Potter's Beast Boy, of which he's wearing that robe, hiding his new suit for Titan season four. If you weren't already aware, Beast Boy is finally getting a cool super suit. Now, some people may be wondering about Doom Patrol. The, the interesting thing about that is right now, there's been a lot of, you know, the Titans and Stargirl side of filming, evidently through this photo. Now, 
The Doom Patrol side of things, since that wrapped filming a while before this stuff was coming out, is that whatever their involvement is in the crossover could have been filmed when they were still filming their season four. So I don't know how that will weave into the plot or the story since we don't really have any details there. We don't even know how the universes will connect because we know that Titan season one, episode four, showed a different version of the Doom Patrol with Beast Boy coming from there. But then the Doom Patrol show didn't even acknowledge Beast Boy. It seemed to be a completely different, it was basically a different Earth, you know? And at the end of Crisis on Infinite Earths, that crossover, it showed that Titans, Stargirl, and Doom Patrol were all on different Earths. Now, I do believe that will be addressed in the crossover. I don't really see how you can't address that. I know right now it seems more of a Titans slash Stargirl crossover, but they definitely, I think, will be wrapping Doom Patrol into that. That part of the rumor and the casting sheet and whatnot is still very likely true. It's just they may have done it a little bit more in advance to what was scheduled with this stuff. Now, also on Eric Dean Seaton's Instagram, he's posted a cool little uh, caption here, but also some of these photos are very interesting because we see that Wayne Manor is featured. He took a little selfie there. It's not massively surprising, but I didn't know with regards to Titan season four, or if this is a part of the crossover as well, if we would uh, be going back to Wayne Manor. This doesn't even necessarily mean that Ian Glenn's Bruce Wayne will be featured in Wayne Manor. They could just be the Titans, Stargirl, Doom Patrol, whatever the heck's going on here. Or if this is a photo from a different episode, they could just be using Wayne Manor as a space whilst Bruce Wayne is off doing something else. But it's just certainly something interesting to acknowledge because also we know that the Titans are in Metropolis this season for some time when they're on their way back to San Francisco. That's when they kind of run into the Church of Blood, this threat, with this supernatural threat in Metropolis. And I think they think we need to kind of sort this out. So what brings them back to Wayne Manor? Why was this a shooting location? Could it just be unique to the crossover? I'm not sure. Could we get Courtney Whitmore, Stargirl herself in Wayne Manor? That would be pretty insane. But yeah, I'll keep you updated on this whenever we get some major updates on this really strange crossover that I didn't think we'd ever get, to be honest with you. You know, I'm down for it, but Stargirl, Doom Patrol, Titans, looks like we're going to get some very interesting, crazy-ass storyline going on there. And let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments. Okay, so for the final stories of this video, we have, a, I think, three left, three smaller ones. Very quickly with Black Adam. There was a new promo that came out seeing Black Adam say the following. There's no one on this planet that can stop me. As we know with promos, sometimes they include footage from even like the ending scene, maybe even, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying a post credit scene because that's the rumored headless Superman cameo appearance that was happening. But since then, apparently Henry Cavill came in to, instead of being headless, actually appear as a head on top of the Superman body. So unlike a Shazam, Superman appearance, it would actually be a full Henry Cavill appearance. And this very line of him saying, there's no one on this planet that can stop me. Everyone is thinking, well, Superman, he could be saying that to Superman or something like that. Or someone comes in from behind and Black Adam just turns around to Superman saying, I'm not from this planet. Now, obviously, very cheesy line there. Who knows what will happen? I mean, this might not even be related to a Superman scene. But the thing is, Black Adam saying, there's no one on this planet that can stop me, and we have a Kryptonian protector by the name of Kal-El Superman. Well, I don't blame fans remotely for thinking that these scenes could be setting up that Superman rumored appearance with Henry Cavill himself in the movie. Maybe they knew what they were doing and wanted to get fans hyped up with regards to, does that mean Superman? So let me know what you think of this. What do you think of the rumor? Apparently he could be appearing Henry Cavill that is in his Batman versus Superman Superman suit rather than the black suit. I love the black suit by the way if this is true If this is true, I would prefer a colored version even though my favorite suit is the Man of Steel version of the suit The, the crest and everything like that is so much better I just wish the coloring was more like the BVS coloring But anyway, let me know your thoughts there and as for the final the final two stories a little bit of an update on Patty Jenkins Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Variety report that it has been removed from Disney's release date calendar. Disney has removed Rogue Squadron, the Star Wars film, from director Patty Jenkins from its release calendar, which is kind of interesting. It, it kind of makes you think, is it even happening anymore? 
Did Wonder Woman 84 kind of put Disney off? Maybe not though, because they are pretty firm with their directors. For example, the article also says that Rogue Squadron was expected to be the first Star Wars movie to play in theaters since 2019's The Rise of Skywalker. Disney and Lucasfilm are busy developing separate Star Wars features, one with Watiti, another with The Last Jedi's filmmaker Ryan Johnson, and a third with Marvel chief Kevin Feige. But there's been little to no information available about any of those endeavors, so it's unclear which of those will be the first to hit theaters. So that's what I mean. The controversy surrounding Last Jedi didn't put them off Ryan Johnson, even though, as, as I've been keeping a close eye on this, there's been no information about this trilogy of his, but it is making me think, did he even want to do that Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron movie now? There was that big announcement of her in that video roller skating to her car, talking about her father, inspiring her. So I don't know. I just wanted to chuck this out there. What do you think of this? Why has it been removed off the slate overall? So last news update for this news roundup video, guys. Maybe some of you aren't so interested in this, but I most certainly am. And that is that a live action Blade Runner sequel series, Blade Runner 2099, is officially moving forward at Amazon Prime Video. So Deadline go on to say that exclusive, the replicants are heading to the small screen as Amazon Studios has put a live action series set in the Blade Runner universe into development. Ridley Scott, who directed the original 1982 Blade Runner movie, is executive producing the series Blade Runner 2099, a follow-up to the feature film sequel Blade Runner 2049, which was released in 2017 and directed by Denis Villeneuve. Silka Louisa, showrunner of Apple TV Plus's upcoming Elizabeth Moss from drama series Shining Girls is writing and executive producing Blade Runner 2099 which comes from Alcon Entertainment in association with Scott Free Productions and Amazon Studios. The project, which would mark the first Blade Runner live action series, is in priority development at Amazon Studios, which is fast tracking scripts and eyeing potential production dates. Staffing is currently underway for writers to join a room. Scott may direct if the series moves forward, sources said. So again, for me, uh, I'm a big Blade Runner fan. I'm a huge fan of science fiction in general. I really enjoyed Blade Runner 2049 with Ryan Gosling, sequel to Blade Runner, of course. That whole world is just so fascinating to me. So even though people may have their thoughts on Amazon Studios and whatnot, I love the idea of diving into the Blade Runner universe in an episodic format with a high budget production. So ultimately all this left to ask since there aren't any major plot details other than 2099, 50 years after 2049 the movie. Let me know what you think of this. Are you down for an episode to episode series on Amazon getting into that Blade Runner universe? I know with that Amazon money, they will be pouring a lot of money into it. I will most certainly be covering this on this channel as we get updates. But everyone, I know there's been a bit of a lengthy video, but that just about ends today's news roundup. So let me know your thoughts on absolutely everything. I read every single one of your comments and considering that we covered a lot in this video, I'm sure you have something to say about some of them. I'd really appreciate a like to help bolster this video out there a little bit more into that YouTube algorithm. It is quite hard to get into sometimes, so any like and support helps along with a comment and maybe consider subscribing to stay up to date with news updates just like this, reviews, breakdowns, and all those good things on everything that I'm sure you love out there in the pop culture realm. But I'm gonna love you and leave you now, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you people of all of the universes out there in the next video. Goodbye.